with the with the day we're having, if we make it to the end of the show at all, I'll be delighted. <laughs> We came from Cleveland today, and uh, just the GPS, we took a four minutes shorter route from the GPS. Uh, Which ended up being a two hour, two hour longer route. <laughs> we got to see the lovely forest you have here.
imagine how good we could be with something we rehearsed. <laughs> Thank you for coming out to see us. This is our very, very first time in West Quaintry. West... <laughs> first and possibly last, by the way, things are going on. Is that how you pronounce it? Because yeah. we kept saying West Watley. <laughs> we, we met some guy today as we pulled up and we said uh, West Watley, and he goes, Quaintly. We're like, what? And he said, oh, wait. <laughs> I'm sure we went to the wrong place. I, was, I typed it into the GPS. I'm sure, it was West Watley. West Watley. <laughs> it happened before our very, very first ever tour two years ago. We started off and we were in Dayton, Ohio, and you know, it was a big city and stuff, and then we went to Maine. And we played this tiny, tiny, tiny place in Maine. And the GPS was bringing us up this dirt road down a further dirt road, which made the first dirt road look like a metropolis. Uh, and then finally, when we got there, I mean, we were full sure we were lost. The phone signal was gone, and everything was gone. But you, we thought we were going to the same thing was going to happen today. That the GPS was playing and tricking us. Again. An hour before we got to the, uh, it was still there was still an hour left in the GPS, and then it, it turned up this road. And I'm not joking. It said dead end. <laughs> When your GPS is telling you that an hour before you get there. <laughs> okay. We'll try a couple of real soon. Okay. These ones are on our second album. We call this one Spaceships and Frying Planets. Oh, yes. Just, don't, just don't, don't ever ask us why. <laughs>
Uh, this one is called Mormon Berets. It's a Scottish song, and uh, according to Aidan here, if you type it into Google Translate, it means beautiful hills. But I heard a story one time about a guy that got stung by Google Aidan. Translate, and uh, he wanted to get a tattoo done on his arm of, uh, of his girlfriend's name. And uh, his girlfriend's name was Siobhan, which is an Irish name. S I O B H A N. That's a bit of a weird one. But uh, so he typed in, he went to Google and he typed in the, the Chinese or the Mandarin for uh, Siobhan. And he gets up his response and he thinks, aha, but I'm going to be clever, I'm going to be clever. I'm, going to, I'm also going to type it into Yahoo, you know, just to make sure. So he types it in and he gets the same result. And then he says, just one more try, and he types it into AOL. And he gets the same thing each time, so he says, brilliant. So he goes down to the tattoo parlor and uh, he says, listen, I want this, okay? All the way down along my arm here, please, in big black right. So a couple of months later, himself and Siobhan are inside the Chinese restaurant. And they're sitting down, and the waiter walks by and he says, Excuse me, do you mind me asking, why did you get that on your arm? And he says, in total smugness, well, actually, uh, this is uh, the Mandarin. I thought you'd know that. This is the Mandarin uh, for Siobhan. This is my girlfriend, Siobhan, you see. And the waiter says, Sorry, buddy, that means search not found. <laughs>
electricity in Ireland about three or four years ago. <laughs> Do you know how I can tell that you're all, uh, you're all well used to coming to Trad series? Is that when people come and it's their first One, time, two. it's their first time playing Trad, or sorry, their first time seeing a Trad concert, they get really caught up with the energy, you know, and it starts off and they're all, yeah, clapping mad right from the start. But, you know, some of these Trad sets can take a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, going mad, it's like, yeah, yeah. Two minutes later, it's like... <sighs> Two minutes after that, it's just like... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you people are experts, clearly. You just hold it all to the end, so... <laughs> it's the same with dancing. Sometimes, you know, some people just start dancing and they just don't know when to stop, because... I mean, with Irish, with Irish dancing, the idea is that you do a step with the right and the same step with the left, and then another step with the right and the same step with the left, and generally maybe one more step with the right and the same with the left, and that's it. We were, playing in a, we were playing in the local pub years ago, and this guy comes up to us, and he was from somewhere in Europe, thank you. He was from uh, somewhere in Europe. And uh, he says, uh, do you mind if I dance? And we said, no problem, sure, do you know, you're very welcome. And uh, this was clearly the fittest man I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> because someone, whatever, like he learned obviously a lot of Irish dancing, but someone didn't tell him about the whole dance two steps and stop. <laughs> so he was waiting for the music to stop. Uh, and we were kind of waiting for him to stop. <laughs> so it occurred to us like, I mean, in a typical dance would last maybe a minute. So after about six minutes, we were kind of looking at him going, maybe he doesn't know how to stop. <laughs> so we kind of said, well, we just keep going. We keep going for the fun of it. The sweat was just pouring down. I mean, if we kept going, it was just going to be a, two, a pair of dancing shoes in a small puddle of water. <laughs> So we stopped and he, you know, he sat down and I mean, I was there thinking this guy's going to sleep soundly for a week. <laughs> and then ten minutes later he had the stupidity and the audacity to come back up again and say, do you mind if I dance again? <laughs> You're very, very welcome to do so. <laughs> that was a long set. Our fingers were hurting after that one. So you can imagine the condition he was in at the end of that one. <laughs> we'll try a couple of jigs off our brand new album. When I say brand new, I mean we only actually saw it for the first time about five days ago. My brother started telling accordion jokes the last two years, and every time after a show, some one of you guys would come up and tell him a new accordion joke, 
and he had a million and one Akari jokes for a finish, and then he bought a banjo. <laughs> What do you call a beautiful woman on the arm of a banjo player? A tattoo. <laughs> they say the definition of a gentleman is someone who can play the button accordion, but chooses not to. <laughs> You're playing a banjo. Shut up. <laughs> Why not? Be gentle my younger brother, it wasn't easy for him growing up in the shadow of a type. <laughs> I grew up in a shadow, all right.
this is an American old time song that, uh, that nobody over at home had ever heard of because we don't have American old time music at home. So we came across this one and put it on it as film and we started playing it at home and people said, oh, wow, that's, that's great, did you write that? I said, no, 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 it's, it's, it's American old time, it's American old time. Everywhere we played, people were kind of, you know, did you write that, did you write that? You get asked so many times before you start to think, maybe we did write that. <laughs> We were kind of saying, did you write that? And we were like, define right. <laughs> so we recorded it and then we came over here on our very, very, very first show. Uh, we started singing it and I was this close to saying, so here's a, here's a little song we wrote. And, uh, opened my eyes halfway through the song and found half the crowd were singing along with us. <laughs> Turned out to be as uh, common as Twinkle Twinkle over here.
the Shady Grove. Shady Grove, my little love, Shady Grove, I know. Shady Grove, my little love, I'm bound for Shady which literally translates as the water of life. <laughs> Did you hear about the... No, that's true, yeah. Did you hear about the Irish guy that got pulled over by the cop? He was 
he was swerving left and right either side, you know. And the cop said, oh, there's something up here, yeah. So he pulls him over and uh, comes up to the side of the car and he rolls down the window and the steam came back and all comes out and nearly knocks the cops. Uh, were, were you drinking? And he said, uh, 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 no, uh, I, I wouldn't, I would never, I, I, I didn't touch the drop. And the cop says, right, and what's that right there? He said, uh, and he points at a bottle of wine that the guy is drinking while driving. He said, uh, uh, it's water. He said, give it to me. Good. Sir, this is wine. He goes, yeah. uh, praise the Lord and all of his miracles. <laughs> And he went straight to jail. <laughs> they get worse. They get worse than that. <laughs> Why don't you pick up the banjo and tell a few more recording jokes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try another song. This one is on our first album. This one is called Slip Jigs and Reels. He was barely a man in his grandfather's coat. Saw him to the light in a ten shilling note. So goodbye to the family, goodbye to the shore. When a man takes his fortune, you see no more. Go on the ocean, it's just like corn. Stop. 
dance floor, rolling the dice and spin the wheel. But he took most delight in the slip jigs and Because they said they were coming tonight, and we had been talking about beers just before we met them. <laughs> so I was like, geez, I hope they're here. We don't have bears in Ireland. Well, there's nothing in Ireland that's ever going to catch you. I mean, if you were sleeping outside in the grass, the worst thing you're going to catch is a cold. So there's no spiders, there's no snakes, there's no wolves, there's no bears, there's no... There's nothing really, just bad weather. <laughs> There's nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> there's so there's cardiac players, unfortunately. Just a lot of miserable Irish people are always giving out about the weather. But we, we were in Michigan about a year ago, and it was, uh, it was during March. We, we were brought out ice fishing, and like, I mean, we were sh we, surely there's no such thing as ice fishing. I mean, like, it's wet and cold in Ireland, but it's never that cold. You know? So we just have the worst of every possible world of weather. So they brought us out fishing anyway, and uh, as we were walking out, you know, there was something. <coughs> We just had this sort of bad feeling, and I said, "Is there any, uh, is there any wolves around here?" And said, no, 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 no. Not that I know of. So, this is the guy that was bringing us out. So we were sitting inside in our little tent, I suppose. Is that what you call it? Shack. 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 And uh, we were fishing for like two hours, and we were full sure that they were just, ah, oh, let's play a joke on the Irish. <laughs> Come to Ireland and you can go leprechaun hunting. <laughs> Ice fishing. Now I don't want likes to claim that he did catch something. He basically caught a goldfish. I mean, <laughs> I'd say the little thing that was on the hook just ate a stone and looked a bit bigger when he pulled it back up. <laughs> so then we were kind of there for two hours. And we kind of started talking about how we don't have wolves and stuff in Ireland as well. I said to the guy, you know, I said, would they, would the wolves ever come down here? And he goes, no, no, no. Well, you know, if they felt, you know, hungry. <laughs> as he said it, I hear the. Oh! <laughs> Good night and thanks. <laughs> we we're basically back inside within two minutes. <laughs> so we're going to finish the first half of this one. If you want to come say hello during the break, or we have CDs outside as well. So uh, please grab one. Sorry, I keep saying grab one. Uh, buy one. <laughs> I've made that mistake before. <laughs> Sorry again, guys. Thank you for bearing with us and the sound and everything. So. Uh, yeah.
lot of money for that, Joe. Can you give us a couple of beats on that so we can hear it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sure, sure. <laughs> no, before we do anything as well, can we all sing happy birthday to Oliver? Oh. He's only 16 today. <laughs>
round you carry? Uh, my friend. Galway. Galway. Close, but uh, no less. Kerry is kind of like the butt of every Irish show, you know. We've got, uh, like, why, why do Kerry dogs have flat noses from, from chasing parked cars? <laughs> Just type of thing you get the idea, so Kerry, Kerry you're famous for polkas and slides, you know. And uh, what do you call a Kerry man under a wheelbarrow? A mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> this is all on video as well, so we're in trouble. Can we edit that? <laughs> I actually heard one joke uh, before about her, the Kerry man wins. Um, oh no. This is one of these jokes that like at the start of it, I actually heard a priest tell this joke and when, when you first hear it you're kind of going, where is he going with this one? But, uh, but it's a great joke. So, uh, so there was an Irishman anyway from Kerry and he was over on a building site in England and Paddy Englishman. Actually that's the only time that the, the Kerry guy ranks above someone is when there's a Paddy Englishman. <laughs> so, so Paddy Irishman and Paddy Englishman are over on a building site in England. And Paddy Englishman is on top of a scaffold and Paddy Irishman is below at the bottom of the scaffold. And he's got all these Kerry techniques and they've all got their lingo, you know, and they're all doing this, that, and the other. So the Englishman looks down and he says, he looks at the Irishman and he goes, that. And the Irishman looks at him and he goes, that. <laughs> you stick with me. So, <laughs> so the, yeah, where is he going? So imagine this now in, in church. No. <laughs> so the Englishman looks down and he goes, The Irishman goes. And the Englishman goes. And the Irishman goes. <laughs> so the Englishman climbs down the scaffold, he goes the whole way down the ladder, and he goes, You stupid Irishman, I'm looking for a one foot ruler. And the Irishman goes, I know, it's in your back pocket, you fucking idiot. <laughs>
part of the show that we like to call uh, to press them as much as possible for five minutes before bringing them right back up again. <laughs> this is a piece called The Last Waltz, or uh, Julian's Waltz. And if I'm ever playing to a crowd that aren't listening, I always say, you know, this is, this is called Julian's Waltz. This is the last tune played on the Titanic. Oh, oh it's not. But, uh, <laughs> Everybody's listening all of a sudden. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't there, maybe it was. But...
been a foreign lander for seven years or more. Among the brave commanders, where wild beasts howl and roar, I've conquered all my enemies on land and on the sea. But you, my dearest jewel, your beauty has conquered me. I can't build a ship of love without the wood of trees. A ship would burst asunder if my proof falls to thee. If ever I proved false love, the elements would moan. The fire would turn to ice love. The seas would rage and burn. Have you heard the morning dove? She's flying from pine to pine. She's mourning for her own love, the way I mourn for mine. I lie awake out in the night. I see the shining star. I wonder if you see them too wherever you are. I've been a foreign lander for seven years or more. Among the brave commanders, where wild beasts howl and roar, I've conquered all my enemies. On land and on the sea But you, my dearest jewel Your beauty has conquered me But you, my dearest jewel Tis you that's conquered me
Would you like another one off the new album? Yes. Yeah. We call the new album uh, Without a Paddle. So, from the famous expression, I wonder if you guess why. Which is actually an improvement on our second album, which is called The Return of the Giant Sock Monsters from Outer Space. No explanation needed there, really. Or the first album, which is just self-entitled Socks in the Frying Pan. So, if we were to make a list of questions, we get asked, uh, where did you get your name from? <laughs> just when people kept asking us that, we had to, we made a point of saying every album has to be just more ludicrous than the next one. <laughs> That's also Shane's best impression at an American accent. That was really good, don't encourage it. He says it's not good, and yet every couple of days I call now and again, I call his room and go, uh, is this Mr. Hayes? Are you checking out with us this morning? <laughs> He'll go, uh, uh, sure, yeah, yeah, let me just get my stuff together. Yeah, yeah. Really, I'm, I'm just humoring him so I don't hurt his feelings. I turn over and fall asleep for another seven hours. We get asked all the time, you know, about the names because Shane is easy to remember, but then we have Fiacra. What? Fiacra. There we go. <laughs> Not really, no. Fiacra. Fiacra. It's an Irish name, yeah, Fiacra. Spelt as it's pronounced. <laughs> it's spelled F I A C H R A. So it's a bit mad. Then you have Aidan. Which is kind of like Aiden, except Aidan. It's like the Irish version or the Gaelic version of Aiden. But there is no, there is no uh, English version of Fiacra. But every time. Every time we meet new people, they kind of, it goes, oh, I'm Shane, and it's like, oh, hi, nice to meet you, Shane, and then it's like, uh, Freaker? Freaker? Freaker. Secret. Bureaucrat? Bureaucrat. Bureaucrat was a new one, I'll give you that. We can add that one to the list. Then we get to Aidan. Aidan? Aban? Acorn? I kind of got fed up with that because it was like, oh Shane, that's the easy one, I remember that one. So I started to be, I kind of started doing it to a few different people that we'd, uh, we'd meet them new and they'd say, this is Aidan, Aegon, Aegon, Acorn, the, the usual one, and then Freaker, Secret, Secret, then we got to me and I'd say, hi, my name is Shkifnuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskuskusku
you fellas take it easy. Have a good day. This one is called When First I Came to Caledonia. Uh, we, went, we did a, a Disney cruise recently. So. We didn't have to dress up though, you know. <laughs> we didn't have to dress up. So we went from uh, Florida up to Boston, and then from Boston to Nova Scotia. And uh, we went to a place called Sydney. And uh, basically we picked up this song here. Stopped, picked it up from there, and it's called When First I Came to Caledonia. And it's all about the islands around that location. Like, apologies to anyone that is working in airport security. Don't get me wrong, 
we've, we've obviously met some very cool people, but I mean, once. Wow. <laughs> Singular. Um, I met one guy on the way over and uh, I put the accordion through, I was carrying it on. And you know, we were having a bit of fun, you know, with these people. They have a long day, they're having a long day, they're working hard, you know, it's serious work, so oh, I'm having a bit of a joke with them now and again, you know. So there is harm, as it turns out. <laughs> I, put the, I put the accordion through and uh, you know, it looks like kind of like a typewriter or something as you as you pop it through, and he goes, uh, Sir, well, what's inside the case? I said, uh, it's an accordion. And uh, he goes, is it dangerous? I said, only in the wrong hand. <laughs> Sir, if you could please step aside. <laughs> you can barely hear the slap of the glow. <laughs> I, have, I have one worse. I, um, we're musicians, you know, we're kind of strapped for cash. We don't want to be spending extra money on the baggage. So I That's because you keep spending all your money on perm jobs. <laughs> yeah, it's part of my life, whatever. He, he spent all the money on, we spent all the money on the first album, he spent it on perm jobs. We spent all the money on the second album on counselling. Like, we barely, we barely managed to get into the studio to do a third album. So if anyone is happy to buy one and support further counselling attention, please. Hence without pen. <laughs> so I was in the airport and I thought I'd have this great idea and put all of my clothes on. <laughs> as in everything I was bringing. Um, so I had like about four pairs of pants on. And, uh, and little did I know I'd left a coin in the inside oh. pants. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can guess what happened. <laughs> They took me aside and put, I had to go into a side room while these lads were just, you know, splitting Waiting themselves. to catch our flight. <laughs> they had the cameras out, the whole shebang, and so I was in the room with the two guys beside me and they were like, Sir, uh, could you search your pockets please? And I was like, uh, I'm not sure which one it's in. <laughs> so I had to, I don't know why I'm telling you this. I basically had to take all the pants off and they finally found a coin and they were like, they actually apologized to me. They were, they were like, sir, I'm so sorry. I was like, you know, I, you know, we can't really spend money on putting all the bags in it. They were like, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. They were laughing though afterwards. So. Anyway. Would you like to help us sing a song? This one we picked up, it's on our second album. We picked this one up last year at the Walnut Valley Festival in uh, Kansas. It's a bluegrass festival. It's absolutely unbelievable. If anyone has been there, let them know. And if they haven't, please do go. It's, uh, it's an old American classic. So, is there any bluegrass fans here? Yeah. Yeah. We saw you had uh, Tim O'Brien here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we, so cool. we apologize in advance for the amateur butchering we're about to do on this <laughs> bluegrass classic. It's called, it's called Rolling in My Sweet Baby's Arms. You heard that? Yeah. That's also three quarters of the lyrics, so uh, <laughs> if you don't know what you now know most of it. So we want to hear you singing this one.
Facebook? Who here is on Facebook? We'll try that again. <laughs> Sometimes, right? Who here is going to give us a like on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to get to 2 million likes. And we have about 7,500 at the moment. So, <laughs> any one of these days... We actually, we actually have played very little over in the east of the country. A lot of it's been the Midwest, so... If everyone that likes this music tells, you know, three friends, and they tell three friends, that, you know, that, that'll be a lot of people. A lot of people. Bennett, <laughs> Bennett. Matt is not my brother's strong point. <laughs> Can I just get a show of hands? Uh, I was talking to some people outside, and everyone I talked to seemed to be a musician. <laughs> Who's a musician in here? Oh, yeah. That's good for you. <laughs> That's a terrible experience. Why, why did you tell me that now? Yeah. <laughs> Someone told me at the break, I was thinking, oh, no, I got away home. This is terrible. Well, at least, I love these gigs, you know, they're very intimate, so you can hear all the chains mistakes and stuff, so. Tell me what, I think you like each other. I think so. Place your bet. I would like to congratulate my brother, though. Uh, last year, he actually won the 2015 um, Irish Music Association Award for the best player of his chosen instrument. I'm wrong, I'm wrong. That was me. Um, <laughs> tell them about your award. <laughs> at, least, at least there's competition in the fiddle thing, you know, I mean, there's about four recording players in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I cry myself to sleep every night hugging my award. <laughs> I'm sure he's crying himself to sleep hugging words at night. <laughs> Maybe edit, edit that as well, if my mother said that. Thank you very much to Paul and Claudia for having yeah. us here. Yeah. And to Rebecca, who was obviously drunk the first time she came. Oh. Had to come and make sure we were just as bad sober. Yeah. And I just say as well, thanks very much to Paul and Claudia as well, because these sort of venues are like, they're supporting live music, you know, and the festivals are great, they're big festivals, but we absolutely love playing little, you know, small little intimate gigs like this, so yeah. it's supporting yeah. our music and it's a really cool thing you've got going here, so keep it going. And, and Just thank you once more to all of you for coming out. It would have been pretty lonely if we were here on our own. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to finish up with this one. This one is called The Jewel. So thanks again for having us. Thanks for coming out. Have a great night.
here to hear that. I'm back on again. The problem is that we don't really know anymore. I think you'll notice if we just started over the ad. Thanks to the two guys in the video and the sound as well. I forgot to thank you. I hope you're as good at editing as you are recording. Our mammy thinks we come out here at this stage. She thinks we're going around all over the United States drinking. Which isn't entirely true, mammy. <laughs> Some part of that is true, I suppose. I'm going to finish with a song. This is uh, probably the saddest song we know. <laughs> Teach you guys to ask for an encore again. <laughs> They say that 90% of Irish songs are about, you know, famine and death and immigration and general misery and uh, the other 10% are about drinking. So, there's about 2% there that are like sad and depressed because you ran out of drinking. So this is called Bonnie Light Horseman and uh, it's one of the first songs we actually ever put together and it's about a, a, a girl who wishes her, husband, her, her love goes to fight in the Napoleonic Wars you know, now I just figure out where they come from. <laughs> They're grey hairs, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having these dreams that like horses are coming into me in the middle of the night. And I'm like, oh. so the love goes and dies in battle and she wishes she could be a little bird to fly over beauty. So, it's like I said, the saddest song we could possibly sing. <laughs> One more time, thank you for coming out and made the drive very much worthwhile. So. Yeah. trip to get you guys couldn't be happier about it.